In the second module in Arts, we will focus on the different sculptures made during the ancient, classical, and medieval art periods. This is the continuation of our Arts Module 1 lessons. In the last module, we discussed Lesson 1 to 3. This time, in Module 2, we will continue the discussion of Lesson 4 to Lesson 6. Lesson 4 is about sculptures from the early age, prehistoric era, and Egyptian. Lesson 5 is about the sculptures from classical period, Greek and Romantic sculptures. And Lesson 6 is about the sculptures from medieval period, Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic sculptures. Here is the timeline of the different art periods that we are going to talk about. First is the prehistoric and Egyptian arts during 1.5 million BC to 2000 BC. BC means before Christ. Second art period is the Greek and Roman art during 2000 BC to 400 BC. And the last one is the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic period during 400 BC to 1400 AD. Let's first start with Lesson 4, Sculptures from Early Age, the Prehistoric and Egyptian Era. In the prehistoric sculptures, symbolic elements were widely used. Materials used in sculptures vary according to region and locality. Archaeologists believe that their sculpture is a result of natural erosion and not of human artistry. Now, in the Egyptian sculpture, Symbolic elements were widely used, such as forms, hieroglyphics, relative size, location, materials, color, actions, and gestures. Symbolisms were heavily used to represent the gods. Hieroglyphics is the formal writing system of Egypt with the use of pictures. As you can see in the picture on the right side, there is an example of a hieroglyphics which they carved in the caves as a use of communication. Now let me show you some examples of the sculptures made during the prehistoric and Egyptian art period. First is the sculpture of Queen Nefertiti, which is a realistic with heavy leaded eyes, slender neck, determined chin, and pure profile under her heavy crown. Queen refers to the great royal wife of the Egyptian pharaoh. This sculpture is made with a limestone. In the 18th dynasty, 1375 to 1357 BC. Next is the sculpture of the pharaoh Menkaure and his queen using stone. This was made in the 4th dynasty. 2548 to 2530 BCE. This is an example of portraits presented in rigid postures and were simple and powerful with very little show of private emotion. Next is the sculpture of Venus of Willendorf. This was made 28,000 BCE to 25,000 BCE. This sculpture is carved from limestone with excessively heavy breast and abdomen used as a charm to ensure fertility. Next one is the sculpture of Venus of Brasempoi. This sculpture was made 25,000 years ago. This is a sculpture of a lady with wood. It is a fragmentary ivory figurine from the Upper Paleolithic Era that realistically represents the human face and hairstyle. Now let's move on to Lesson 5. This is about the classical sculptures, including the Greek and Romantic sculpture. Let's go first to the Greek sculptures during 450 to 400 BC. The Greeks began carving in stones to make sculptures in the Hellenic period. One of the most popular styles of the Greek sculptures was the Hellenistic style. 
Hellenistic denotes a preference in sculpture for more elaborated patterns and an emphasis on the representation of movement for dramatic effects. In the Greek sculptures, marble was the principal material used by sculptors in the classical period in Greece. Greek sculptors were particularly concerned with the following. First, the perfection and proportion of human body, human anatomy. Second, is the arrangement of figures and groups. And the last one, dramatic representation of movements. Now, in the Romantic sculptures, religious art was of extreme importance in ancient Roman society and culture. That's why, Every ancient Roman temple household has at least one statue of deity or god, which was an important part of worship. Sculptural portraits during the Republican period in Rome emphasize realistic individual characteristics. It is often observed that ancient Roman sculpture and architecture was exactly copied from ancient Greek sculpture and architecture. This time, I will show you some famous sculptures of the Greek and Roman people during this art period. The first one is called Myron the Discobulus. This was made 450 BC. This shows an attitude of maximum tension, full of compressed energy, and about to explode an action. Second sculpture is called the Portonacio Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus means tomb or libingan in Tagalog. The Portonacio Sarcophagus was made between 180 to 190 BCE. This is used for the burial of Roman general involved in the campaign of Marcus Aurelius and this is the best known and most elaborate of all sarcophagus. It depicts battle scenes between Romans and Germans, and it is carved using marble. Next one is also a sarcophagus. This is called Sarcophagus from Servetiri. This was made in 520 BCE. This is made of terracotta, and its length is 6 foot 7 inches or 2.06 meters. And this is a sculpture of a husband and wife which are shown reclining comfortably as if they were on a couch. Now in the last lesson in this module, lesson 6 is about medieval sculptures including Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic sculptures. Let's go first to the Byzantine sculptures. The dominant themes in Byzantine sculptures are religious, everyday life scenes, and motifs from nature. Eastern Orthodox was the church found in the Byzantine Empire. Latin was their primary language. Carved ivory objects were the leading form of Byzantine sculptures. Next, Romanesque sculptures. Sculptors use sunken relief and undercutting to carve figures. This is a technique they use to carve portal sculpture on cathedrals. Romanesque and Gothic period comprise the great age of cathedrals and their foremost sculptures are architectural. Now in the Gothic sculptures, Cathedrals during this period reflect people's belief of honoring powerful barons who controlled Gothic cities. So in the Romanesque and Gothic art periods, their sculptures are mainly architectural and more on cathedral or church sculptures. Here are some of the sculptures from the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic era. First one is called the Barberini Diptych. This is an early example of Byzantine work from ivory, which is another kind of stone. 
Second one is called the Last Judgment. This is an architectural element with an arch or pediment. This is the West Portal of Cathedral of St. Lazare in Autun, Burgundy in France. Next one is called Resurrection of the Virgin. This was made at the end of the 12th century in the Cathedral of Amiens. Now here are the activities that you need to do in Arts Module 2. You may answer them online in the links that I will post in our FB group or if you cannot answer online, you may write an answer sheet, Answers Only. I will show you the activities that you need to do in this module. Now, you may start doing the activities in this module and we will finish the last art module next week.